Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be reviewing a 2023 C8 Corvette Stingray with the Z51 Performance Package, and this one happens to be a coupe. Now before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Carl Malone Chevy here in Park City, Utah for giving me some time with this Corvette. This particular one is still available for sale. They also happen to have a red one as well. Um, I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out both of the cars. If you have any questions, just reach out to them. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's Let's get into it. So we're actually gonna start things off by showing the key fob here because we're gonna be going into the front, but this is a pretty crazy key fob. So you got the Corvette logo there on the back. We've got lock and unlock, remote start, and the opening for the front and the trunk. So quite a few functions built into one key. And opening up that front, you guys can see this is pretty dang practical. I mean, it's big enough that you gotta have an escape button. So, I mean, if that doesn't scream practicality, I don't know what does. Now, before we go over the rest of the front end, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now, starting in the center here, you guys can see we've got the, I don't know if we can call it a stripe, but it's kind of a stripe. I guess we can call it a decal at the same time. It's pretty cool. It contrasts very nicely to the black paint on this car. And then we have what I will call the McLaren-esque headlights here. Definitely look exotic. And speaking of exotic, just look at this front end. It is so aggressive. And well, putting it all together, this is one of the most beautiful modern cars. Coming around the side here, time wheel setup is 245, 35, 19 in the front, and then 305, 30, 20 in the rear. So we have a completely staggered setup. And I love the blacked out wheels on this particular one. And then notice we've got these yellow brake calipers to actually match the yellow there on the hood. That's pretty cool. I love how the fender's molded there. I think that looks really cool. And then the mirrors, that's another cool part of the new Corvette. And then notice how that's yellow to match the decal and the brake calipers. And if for some reason you don't like these yellow accents, by the way, they're vinyl, they're not paint, so they're very easily removable. But anyways, look at the side view. It obviously has that mid-engine supercar appearance. Ooh. Now under the trunk, since it's mid-engine, we have a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8 that goes through an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. Fuel economy is actually really good for this type of car. 16 around town and then 24 on the highway with power outputs being a whopping 495 horsepower and then 470 pound-feet of torque. And while we're back here, you guys can see we've got more cargo behind the engine, and apparently you can fit a bag of golf clubs here in the back. That's what Chevy was worried about. Um, but anyways, lots of yellow. And then when you're all done, the coolest part is this is actually soft closed, so you just kind of gently put it down, and then it'll do the rest of the work for you. Now, I don't think this is factory. It looks like the taillights have been tinted, and it just has this really cool aggressive appearance because of that. We got the Z71 spoiler here in the back end, parking sensors, and then the exhaust tips have also been blacked out on this one. Now, putting it all together, I love the spec on this particular C8. It's like all blacked out, and again, if you don't like the vinyl, you could take it off, and this would have just a Batmobile appearance. Now this one is a 3LT, so we've got tons of leather trim here with contrasted yellow stitching all throughout. You guys can see with the memory seat function there, by the way. Window controls are automatic. You have the Performance Series Bose sound system, electronic door release, which is always a fun thing. And then you guys can see down below for the trunk and the front. But look at the stitching even on the bottom. That's one of the cool things about the 3LTs. You've got lots and lots of nice material. And then taking a look at the seats, you guys can see with the yellow stitching, it looks like this has the carbon fiber bucket seats. Yellow seat belt here, perforated all down the center, by the way. And then we've got our power adjustments here on the side. And then pretty nice looking pedals right there. And then you guys can see we've got more nice trim there on the dash. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, we obviously have the square steering wheel that's been somewhat controversial. I think it looks cool. Got really nice paddles on the back. Some more nice stitching here with the Corvette logo front and center. Um, we've got our volume controls with this. Heated steering wheel button on the steering wheel, cruise control, all the normal stuff. And then you got your Z mode, which is kind of like your special mode, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I think the steering wheel is nice. And here's our full digital gauge cluster in Z mode, and then that's taking it out of Z mode. Um, but speaking of drive modes, we got a lot of them. We've got a sport, we have a track mode, and notice it'll actually adjust the gauge cluster depending on what mode you go into, which I think is kind of like a fun part of this. Let me know if you like sport mode or track mode more. I think the sport mode might be a little bit more appealing to me. But then you obviously have my mode as well, tour, weather. So, you know, literally they expect you to daily drive this if you want. 
Now the Corvette comes with a 360 camera system, which I think is huge for this type of car because visibility is obviously not great and it's low to the ground. And so it's nice that you have this 360 camera system. And something's cool is when you put it in drive, it'll automatically pull on with the front camera. So look, reverse and then drive. And you can see the different viewpoints out. So it's a really good camera system overall. And then as for the infotainment system, it's just Chevy's newer-ish unit. Um, so response time's really good with it. You've got your performance data recorder, which is pretty fun. Uh, it's got add both CarPlay and Android Auto, and it has a vent below it, which is kind of random. And the stop-start button, <laughs> yeah, volume control. This, this stuff actually makes sense. Now I've got these buttons here. So for the front camera, which is cool, they have that front and lift. And then we also have this for the stability control. And then transmission selector right here with your manual mode. And then your drive mode select right next to that. And then you guys can see here, with all of the climate controls and everything. He did cold seats, all of that, which is just interesting. Tons of yellow stitching in this one. And then we got the center console, which is kind of small. And then we have a wireless phone charging pad in the back. And then this one's got the 70th package, it looks like, I suppose. And uh, popping over here, this is interesting. So that's for the glove box. So yeah, kind of cool. And it's got nice padding on the outside. And then also here on the dash as well. And you guys can see tons of yellow. Now I've got the sun visor here. And then look at the headliner. That's really nice with the stitching and all that. Definitely makes the car feel more premium. And then obviously it's the T-top, so you just have those little things that you pull to take it off. And then this also has the camera rear view mirror. So here's a window sticker for this particular Corvette. Um, you guys can see all of the standard equipment with this. And then we have the base MSRP 76,150. And then here's the options on this particular one. Control MSRP 89,560 dollars. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility of the hood and hopefully you can see the heads-up display. Both the mirrors just do a blind spot monitoring and throughout the rest of the rear. And with that being said, we're actually also gonna put the front end lift up. So uh, let's set off. Um, super excited to do this review. So this is obviously, you know, not the C8 that everyone's talking about right now because everyone's talking about the Z06. But here's the deal. This is way, way, way more attainable than a Z06 because not only is it far less expensive than a Z06, um, you know, it's a lot easier to find these, you know, regular C8s now, right? And so I think from that side of things, this car, in my opinion, although not as crazy as the Z06 because it doesn't have the flat plane crank V8, I think it's, it's a lot more uh, appealing in a sense because it's like, oh, you can actually buy one and you don't have to pay an insane amount of money like this. I mean, Z06 is going for like 200, 300,000 plus dollars depending on the market adjustment and all that kind of stuff in the area that it's at. But first setting off, what drive mode am I in? Okay, apparently I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so we're in the, we're in the normal mode it looks like. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't driven one of these in a while. Um, it's actually pretty good with the ride quality. I am surprised though at like the overall feel of this compared to, you know, some high performance front engine cars. Cause I mean, that's what a lot of people, obviously people are comparing this to other mid engine cars, but I mean, there's also the argument that you can compare this to some front engine, you know, muscle cars like the Shelby GT500, for example. And it's interesting having such a light front end. We're gonna take this slow. Uh, that's one thing, cars that are low to the ground. Um, is it's it's interesting it, it kind of bumps around a lot more because obviously when you have a like a big v8 over the front wheels it, it definitely changes the damping characteristics but i will say overall i mean this i wouldn't call it like a full-on luxury car but for like a supercar type deal it's it's pretty dang comfortable um the seats i mean i, I don't know if this is because i've been weightlifting a lot lately but like <laughs> I don't fit exactly like my my like midsection fits fine, but my back like I it's it's a little bit too tight <laughs> that area, Which is uh, kind of funny. Um, okay, so we're in the track mode here <laughs> this, this thing's quick the dual clutch is very very responsive 
It's got really good power. And um, just so you guys know, I'm up at Park City here. And so I think the elevation, we're gonna avoid that. Um, I think the elevation is like 7,000 feet. Just Google it uh, if you guys really wanna know. <laughs> Such a fun car. Such a fun car. It sounds really good too, honestly. I wanna see the uh, paddles, so I'll pop it in the manual mode. Okay, so we got it in the manual mode here. I think this is one of those automatic cars that's actually better in manual mode than it is in automatic mode. Because this transmission is so... Like, look at that. It's like instant with the response. Um, something else that's pretty instant with the response is actually the steering. Like, you just very little input and the car just turns it. And that's a lot of mid-engine cars, frankly. But the, the Corvette definitely accomplishes that those mid-engine driving dynamics. Okay, well, let's get into summing things up here with this Corvette. So responsive. It's so fun. <laughs> Man, this transmission, um, it's... So I've actually driven this transmission in another car, uh, the Maserati MC20S. I guess Ben Hardy's finally legit enough to do some supercar reviews. Can we do the front end lift here? Lift system unavailable. Huh. I was running over this cattle guard. We gotta go really slow over this. Again, low to the ground. Yeah. I mean, this transmission, it uh, just like in the MC20, it's just boom, boom, boom. It's such good transmission. Um, so here's the deal. I actually happened to drive my Shelby GT350 uh, today. That obviously is not technically... A, actually, I, I feel like you could compare it to the C8 because, you know, some of the, you know, some of the 2020 GT350s are going for similar price or similar price to what this is going for. Anyways, as I was saying about the uh, handling before we go back to the GT350 thing, I mean, it's just like, it's on rails. Again, mid-engine car, it's, it's amazing. Um, so anyways, as I was saying, the GT350, manual transmission, this is obviously automatic, that's front engine, this is mid-engine. I'm actually shocked at how like much more normal this feels than the GT350, at least with the sound and everything. Again, this is just, you know, Chevy small block V8. But this, this car just, basically what this feels like is you've got like a muscle, which it does, it has muscle car powertrain, so you've got like that muscle car punch and torque and then you have exotic handling and styling. That's the best way to describe this version of the C8. Obviously the Z06 with the flat plane crank V8, that has a more exotic engine sound and feel and all that. But this regular version, if you basically just want a muscle car, but you want a muscle car that looks a lot better than pretty much, I mean, I think this is the best looking like American car, one of the best looking American cars ever made. Uh, but then you also want, you know, better handling and driving dynamics and everything that comes with mid-engine car, that's what this gives you. And it's not like you're giving up much when it comes to acceleration because <laughs> this thing's just so quick. Uh, so overall, I'm a huge fan of the C8. Uh, would I ever trade my GT350 for a C8? I don't know about that. Maybe the Z06, obviously, but that one's, like I said, way more expensive. But this regular C8, I, I don't know about that. That would be that would be a tough decision. Let me know which, but I, again, I don't, they're not, they're not, Mustang versus Corvette. I mean, I don't know if people are actually comparing those, but let me know which one you would choose.